Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if it is your first time watching. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. In today's video, I want to ask a few questions about the effect of shame and how it plays out in the lives of people who have experienced, you know, things that trigger shame in them. This is a sequel to another video that I've done already talking about the fact that shame is not from God. The first question is, can shame lead to having the mindset of an overachiever? The reality is that when people experience shame, what it tends to do in them, it makes them feel unworthy, it makes them feel inadequate. So now they come to a place of trying to overachieve, overdo to prove themselves, to prove to themselves and to others that they are worthy. Because now it is in all these things that they get to do that they get to feel themselves. They get to feel worthy. They get to feel like they belong. And most of the time, where really this is wrong is that it is, you know, inspired by shame. It is not coming from a very healthy place. It is trying to use what came against you for something that can work for you, which it works, but then it's not that healthy. Now, this plays out in the lifestyle of such people that they become perfectionists. It plays out in the area of having perfectionism. Like they are like trying to have so high standard that they want to meet and even exceed to get to feel themselves, to get to prove themselves, to get to feel worthy, to get to feel like they belong. And some of us have been in this place. Like I can tell for myself that based on the shame that I have experienced, it made me try to achieve. It made me try to do things. And when I did these things, I tend to feel a sense of worth. A sense of worthiness when people would say good things about me people would, oh wow that's so great and then i could feel a sense of worthiness about myself but then doesn't mean it was healthy at the end of the day you may not really enjoy the thing you did people clap for you but you may not really enjoy it because of the intent and the motivation behind it, it can also lead people into the second thing validation seeking which is trying to seek validation from others. And how does that appear in being an overachiever? By the time they win, they want to win and win and win in academics, in their career. They are pushing themselves to win. And this is the drive that makes them really win. And people will clap for them. So now that becomes a source of fuel for them to feel validated. They are not seeking validation in terms of begging people, but in terms of doing and working hard. They are hard workers. But somehow, they get to a place of doing this, to a place of being burnt out. Also, this idea of becoming an overachiever, you know, being driven by shame can lead someone to a fear of failure. Because of fearing failure, this person is so delicate because failure will make them, you know, be shamed again, be ashamed again. So to avoid failure from happening, they are now motivated by the fear of failure. As an overachiever to do things i don't want to fail like this is so emotional and so you know deep for them that don't make me fail because if anyone would stand in the way to want to cause them to fail that would trigger so much that they don't want to go back to that memory lane and think of themselves to be failures so they have to stop it in its track and win at all costs no matter what it takes no matter what they would do it is good but not a healthy motivation. So shame can also lead to a place of having a compensation mindset. So trying to win, trying to overachieve and using that as a compensation for themselves so that it can serve as a, you know, a thing to make them get their worthiness back. As if trying to make up for the flaws and the shortcomings of their past trying to make up for the mistakes that they made in the past. For some people, it could be like they have won so much. Okay, like for example, I know this is not trying to talk down on this particular person if this resembles someone, but for someone that might have maybe experienced rape, and now this person now pushes herself to overachieve. Now they are overachieving to a place that no man can stand before them to make them feel lower. To make them feel like he can control them again. Now that leads me to the next point of being an overachiever to the point that you want to control the situation. You want to control everything that happens because you don't want to smell even the sense of shame. Anything that would make you fail, 
that will lead to shame. You want to overachieve. You want to do more to be able to control. Because once you do more, you can have a, se a sense of control over your life and over the things that you do, over your career and all of that. Now, the next question, can shame lead to people pleasing? The answer is yes. The shame you've experienced in the past could be the reason you are people pleasing today. And you are people pleasing because you don't want to cause conflict or rift with people. You don't want to have your own voice. You don't want to have your own say. You're trying to please these people that are in your space so that they will not isolate you. You're not going to isolation again. You not lose people again. Or it will not get to a place of fighting to uncover some things and you get triggered and then you get to remember the shame and everything that might have happened in your past and know this is all long sentence. But the reality is that shame in your past or the shame you've experienced can actually trigger you becoming a people pleaser. I use myself as an example. I became a people pleaser and I can attribute it to the shame I experienced. I didn't want to make anybody angry. I wanted to make everybody feel safe. And sometimes it could even be done at the expense of me expressing my own needs. So coming to a place that I've walked through the corridors of healing, I'm still walking through it and I walk through it all my life by trying to do my soul work and go for therapy and do everything that I can do to be whole as a man. But then I realized that the shame was part of the reason I people pleased. So in order to avoid more shame, you're trying to people please to get people's validation and approval. You're trying to be in the good books of people so that they will always approve of you and validate you. So it could play out in these few points. First of it, the desire for approval, which is trying to seek constant approval by trying to be good to people, try to take every other person's need and do it for them and help people go out of your way overly to help people and make sure they are safe. They are good. This is a good thing to do. But if the motivation is wrong, it will not serve you well. Because if you are as good like that to people, you should be as compassionate like that to yourself. Not when you self-criticize and self-blame and look down on yourself, but now you're doing all these things so that these people can approve of you and validate you. Second thing is the fear of rejection. The shame already had made you feel unworthy and then isolated from people because you do not want more of it to spark up so you felt isolated you could be in a group of people but you know that you are isolated because you're not connected the isolation is as a result of lack of connection because of your shame you cannot really connect because for you to connect it will mean you turn on the light become vulnerable tell people about you for real so it means you cannot really be yourself in any space that makes you live a life of hiding tiptoeing so at this point, you have the fear of rejection that you can't even tell your story. You can't even let people know who you are for real so that they will not reject you. It means you have a constant agreeableness, always agreeing with other people. The next point is that it leads to low self-esteem or it expresses itself as low self-esteem. People pleasers are people that somehow have a low self-esteem. So they don't want to have their own voice, have their own say, they try to please other people, do things so that they would always, you know, get validation from people from outside, not from inside. So this low self-esteem based on shame undermines your overall self-esteem and you feel like you don't really deserve much. So you don't really deserve to be in a group of people, in high class people. Your class is to be in this low class. So now any person at the top though that you get to meet, you have to be so humble, overly humble, even to a fault. That you're like, you don't want to lose these people. You don't want to lose their validation and all of that. The fourth thing is avoidance of negative emotion. Because of the shame you had felt, anything that would remind you of that deep negative emotion, because shame carries such a deep negative emotion, depression, anxiety, embarrassment, that just makes you feel this heaviness on you. Because of that, you would come to a place of saying, and I'm speaking this from experience. I'm not just saying this because of what I read and my studies. I'm saying this from experience because I've experienced it. You come to a place of not wanting to have any negative feeling 
or any negative emotion doesn't mean that negative emotion are all bad no they are not they are just signals to inform you but then as someone that has experienced shame and is still battling with it you're going to feel like no 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 anything that's not positive energy anything that will not make me happy i don't want it the next thing is the need for belonging the need for belonging is created by this shame that you've experienced which create which created a sense of isolation and alienation from people and you could not really belong you could not really feel like you belong amongst people so because now you are a people pleaser you want to people please as a means of finding a sense of belonging you have a team now you have people that you're working with who love you for who you are presenting to them but they may not really love you for who you really are so why not just come to a place of being yourself i know it's difficult it's hard so the next point is becoming a people pleaser based on shame could make you act out as a conflict avoidance person anything that would look like conflict you just run taking flight always even to the point that there are some things you should have a hard conversation on you don't want to have it because anything that will lead to something that will trigger your shame you don't want any part to that the shame you've experienced has created a heightened sense of awareness for you concerning conflict and anything that looks like trouble fight you know anything like that and this is not the best place to be my advice to you is instead of people pleasing or instead of trying to be an overachiever that is you know being driven by shame get healing so that your sense of success should come from a healthy place so also that your sense of connection with people will come from a healthy place not from a needy place because shame will make you come from a needy place like you really need this validation you really need this approval and what does god say to you instead of shame and dishonor you will enjoy a double share of honor you will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours isaiah 61 verse 7 and i'll repeat this again over you i want you to understand and hear this i used to read this scripture over myself and repeat it over myself that instead of my shame i will experience honor and in my life i've come from a place that i'm no more ashamed of the things i went through the shame is not the driving force for anything i do again in my life as much as i'm still healing but then i've come to a place that i'm embracing the healthy part of walking through life and i believe that you can get there instead of your shame god will give you a double portion of honor amen thank you so much for watching today's video to the end and i hope that you get something positive from it something to learn something to encourage you and tell you that shame is not from god and god doesn't want you to remain in a place of shame See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.